Some of you might remember, last February we passed the Recovery Act, which had three parts. One third was tax relief for small businesses and for 95% of them, 95% of working families. One third of the Recovery Act was emergency relief, like increasing unemployment benefits and helping states keep teachers and police officers and firefighters from losing their jobs. And one third was putting people to work on infrastructure and renewable energy and medical research and more. Now, if you hear some of the critics, they'll say, well, the Recovery Act, I don't know if that's really worked because we still have high unemployment. But what they fail to understand is that every economist from the left and the right has said because of the Recovery Act, what we've started to see is at least a couple of million jobs that have either been created or would have been lost. The problem is seven million jobs were lost during the course of this recession. So we've still got a big hole to fill. It's going to be absolutely critical that Congress acts over the next several months to make sure that we don't lose sight of the fact that even though the economy is now growing again, almost 6% last quarter, people have not started hiring again. And we've got to do everything we can to put people back to work because we need a sustainable recovery over the long term. Uh, I, I've got to be honest with you, there's no magic wand that makes the economic problems that were years in the making disappear overnight. And sometimes it's easy for politicians to exploit the anger, the pain that people are feeling right now. I have to point out, though, that some of the very same folks in Congress who opposed the Recovery Act and claim that it hasn't worked have been all too happy to claim credit for Recovery Act projects and the jobs those projects have produced. They come to the ribbon cuttings and... <laughs> they, they found a way to have their cake and, and vote against it, too. But look, we're, we're making progress. But it can't come fast enough. We want to accelerate. And we know that if we truly want to have long-term economic growth in this country, then we need to start addressing some of the struggles that middle-class families have been dealing with for years, long before this particular recession hit. This past decade has been one of the toughest our middle class has faced in generations because folks have seen their paychecks shrink, their housing prices fall, while the cost of everything, from groceries to health care to college, keeps going up. So a lot of you are working two jobs. Certainly, everybody in your households work. You're working longer hours. But you feel like you're treading water. And in some cases, it's not adding up. A lot of people put their kids to bed wondering whether they'll be able to give them opportunities in life that they got from their parents. And, and the thing, New Hampshire, when I was up here campaigning, I told you, I didn't run for president to kick these challenges down the road. I didn't run for president to play it safe. I didn't run to just to keep my poll numbers high as possible for the next election. I ran to solve problems for the next generation. I ran to get the hard things done. That's why you elected me. So I won't rest until businesses are hiring again and wages are rising again, and the middle class is thriving again, and we finally got an economy that works for all Americans, not just some Americans. I won't rest until we do what we know has to be done to secure our leadership in the 21st century. I don't want to cede our future to China, and India, and European countries. I'm not willing to settle for second place. Not for the United States of America, but but if we're going to win the race, here's the thing. I can't do this alone. Democrats can't do it alone. The president can't do it alone. We've got two parties in this country. That's a good thing. It means we've got heated debates and vigorous disagreements. And as messy as democracy 
sometimes is, it means bad ideas can be discarded and good ones can be refined and we don't go too far in any one extreme. That's the genius of American democracy. So I was very pleased when the House Republican Caucus graciously invited me to attend their retreat last week. You know, we had a good time for more than an hour. For more than an hour, we had a frank exchange about the issues facing our country. And we aired some of our grievances. We shared some ideas. There were plenty of things on which we didn't agree, but there were also some things on which we did. And even more th things that we should agree on, if we could just focus on solving problems instead of scoring political points. Uh,